Geez, this was a mongrel of a property when I first came here. I came onto this property at 1 p.m. on a Friday, and um, there were no fences, there were blackberries everywhere, fibro shack and a shed that was half down. Big giant mounds of soil and, and piles of rubbish. The old bloke was pretty crook and he'd been, you know, he hadn't been here for months. Um, I didn't really care for the, the, the buildings. And in fact, the property was a bargain because the buildings were crap. And I thought, well, one, I can fix the buildings, but really, I bought it because of these trees. Even if I'd walked onto the property that day and planted the joint out, no way near in my lifetime am I gonna see trees like this that big. And they're just, they're magnificent. You know, if I've had a crap day at work and I come home and I swing into the driveway, well, the trees make me feel pretty good because they've been here a lot longer than I have. And big, I don't know how big, maybe, I don't know, 35 metres? Maybe nudging 40 metres? And this is a story of a man on a small adventure about to climb a tree. That's it. I mean, yes, there is a bit more to it, but I'll get to that. I think I've always taken gum trees for granted. They're like kangaroos and kookaburras. They're everywhere. You know, I'm this Australian and you take for granted what is in abundance and gum trees are everywhere. I do remember though when I thought gum trees were something special and quite accidental like these things happen. And I was off the coast of Africa about eight kilometres offshore and an offshore breeze bought the smell of eucalyptus from plantations, which was really quite abstract. And, you know, here I am at sea, surrounded by ocean, and I'm smelling eucalyptus. I, I was immediately homesick, and I'd never been homesick before, you know? In 27 years, I hadn't felt like I wanted to be home. It was about two years after I moved in that half of one of the big gums fell over. Me and my neighbor got stuck into it, and we chopped it up, and. It was probably two winters worth of wood for both of us. I don't know, 10, 15 tonnes worth, it was heaps. Anyway, I've been meaning to recut the scar and count the rings, see how old these gums are. I might get a cup of water and see if the water's gonna make it easier. You know they say when you on the verge of death, you see your life flash before your eyes. 30. Well, I can kind of see my whole Australian lineage flash before my eyes here, you know? Here's me, here's my mum, here's my grandmother, and here's her mother, you know? I'm gonna use a bunch of ladders and a bunch of ropes and a heap of webbing to try and get me somewhere interesting up in the tree. For some reason, I tend to collect ladders, so <laughs> I didn't realize I had this many ladders. I wanna spend a couple of meals up there. Um, I'm going to leave behind regular life, so I'll turn my phone off and leave my keys and wallet down here, bottom of the tree, spend the night, have a nice breakfast, have a coffee up there, wave to my little daughter and my wife and then come back down tomorrow, sometime whenever I feel like it. Like any kind of climber or an alpinist, I'm looking from afar, looking for, all right, where's the nooks and crannies that are going to help me out? What limbs can I use? What can I hoist off? What's a really good healthy limb that I can put a pulley on? I'm gonna do an awful lot of talking to myself. Plank, plank. What do we got here? Two straps, you beauty. Yeah, that's a good spot to that one. This would be a kick-ass temporary place to sit and do yoga and generally have a good time. I don't mind being a bit of a backyarder with this stuff. I haven't climbed for years, you know, so I'm pretty rusty on all my systems, but I think I'll just go back to the basics and make it work. These beautiful grand gums, they grow in fertile soils. I love high rainfall. So they grow in this really lush farmscape that I, I live in, and they're all over the joint in the middle of paddocks. They're generally paddock trees. 
Look, maybe it's a bit cliche that I love the big gums, but we know that you need the big gums to have medium-sized trees and medium-sized trees to grow bushes. And under those bushes are ferns and frogs and bugs and all sorts of stuff. And so when you take out the top dog, you take out all of this amazing biodiversity. And it happens so quickly that I don't think we can sort of catch our breath quick enough to know that we shouldn't be chopping down these big gum trees. I, I, it's hard not to take personally, and yet I, you know, I've got to, in a sense, and just celebrate these ones that are here. Yeah, it was only last night that I actually, it dawned on me, because I'm sort of taking a day at a time at the moment with a baby, so I said to Bo last night, so you're sleeping up the tree? And what time are you going up the tree? And how are you getting up the tree? And what's the cherry picker for? <laughs> Working it all out. It was about four years ago, I was sitting on the front porch, it was summer, it was hot, big wind was blowing and I looked up into the canopy of these trees and they were, it was bucking like a bronco. You know, it was like the mast of a ship in a storm and I thought, gee, that'd be a hell of an adventure to go up and spend the night in a tree, just to experience life from a different angle in a tree that's endangered and on my property and special and 12 metres from the front door, you know. So, where are you sleeping? Uh, up the tree, love. Uh, do you plan to sleep on those planks that aren't level? Yeah, not level, nor strapped in at the moment. I think we're gonna get a lot more sleep tonight than what Dad will. Yeah. Maybe he'll end up sort of laying on a branch like a panther and just strapping himself around it or something. Oh, heart skipped a little beat then. What just happened? Oh, well, because the, 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 um, nothing, nothing happened oh, actually. He's sweating, he's sweating. That was really good. Heart skipped a beat because I'm enjoying myself so much. Oh uh, yeah. The hmm. sun going down. I feel like he's rushing and sweating and trying world. to set everything up. Doesn't, yeah, it's not the best oh and &S scenario. I've been going at it now four hours. Lathered in sweat, haven't really stopped. Bringing up my dinner bag. There it is. Helen, bless her, who I married her. She put that in the tucker bag. And I just love tomatoes. It's my first tomato up a tree. I'm gonna leave the dirt on, because I rate the B12 and the dirt around spuds. I'm just gonna leave it on. It's on a real good limb. What, a, what an awesome sort of reinvention of the genre you find yourself in. Pseudo-adventurer. Things are going to bed now, you know? My daughter is in the house going to bed. And all the birds are, you can hear them cheetering and finding somewhere to sit. I can hear my, my dinner boiling away in a transia, nine meters up a tree. I reckon we're good to eat. I need to drain my water and I don't want to hit the ropes and my sleeping bag bag below me. Did I hit the bloody bag? All over the bag. Oh no. And the ropes. That's pretty good. That's good grub. And your mother, she um, requests that you have a parachute. <laughs> a parachute from nine metres. But I don't know much about sleeping with animals up a tree. So tonight's gonna to be, you know, one of possums and owls, ants. I don't know what that thing is, what I can hear. Can you ever persuade him in or out of anything? I didn't even try. Oh, I've got that bastard there, that's a bit bad. The shoes coming off is a really momentous part of the day. I've got my book, gum. <laughs> That's quite a bloody drop down there.
First couple of hours, I, you know, the body was saying, yeah, this is not, not particularly uh, natural or safe. <laughs> Especially one time I, I sort of shifted my movement and went to lay my, leg, my legs back down and they just didn't land on anything. They were off the side. And then the wind started, which was really nice because I could feel everything then. I could feel the boards under me and I could feel the tree and it sort of gave me a, um, a reference point, which was really nice, you know. And I reckon it's kind of like being in a boat, you know, you've got to trust your boat. Otherwise, if it sinks out there at sea, you're dead. And if this tree falls, I'm dead. So I've got to feel it, you know, and then you feel safe. That was a really neat experience. I have forgotten a cup, so I'm going to be having a large, small pot of coffee. Mozzies are still about, so I'm going to tuck my socks into my pants like a dodgy PE teacher. Here we are, coffee. Let that just settle for a second. I'd rather live in a world with big trees around than not. I feel safer around big trees. There's this bloody crazy mentality. Let's chop down the oldest, most culturally significant thing in the area so we can put three more houses up. Drives me bonkers. Oh yeah, that's one strong brew. I've spent my whole life obsessing about wood and it's probably only been the last 10 years where I'm all about trees, you know? I'm quite personal with them now. These big gum trees, which are vulnerable. These are one of about 130 odd species in Australia that are vulnerable of our iconic, amazing gum tree. A little bit of potato and pumpkin still left in the interior of the pot. That is good coffee. It's actually not. People would refuse that in a coffee store, but it's good where I'm sitting. <laughs> Baked beans in coffee grounds. Oh yeah, I did spend a night in my treehouse as a kid. I had to bargain like heck to do it. I had to convince dad that there'd be no tomfoolery between me and my mates. Uh, so I have spent a night in a tree, but that was 30 years ago and a very different experience to this. I've got five acres here and we're, and we're slowly encroaching the beautiful pasture that it has been for a hundred years and making it forest again, or some forest again. Gee, that bird song's good. I'm just thinking of bird song and someone on their lawnmower and how I should sit on this park bench more. I fear I've become one of those people that have park benches in their garden and don't sit on them. Had to come 10 metres up a tree to sit on my park bench. Hmm, I should sit in it more often. I think I trust this park bench. Not sure about the planks underneath me, but anyway. Testy word two, testy word two. All right, Bo, thanks for joining me. We're just gonna jump straight in. Can you tell us where we are right now? Well, in very simple terms, mate, we're up a gum tree. <laughs> um, this is as close to home as I've ever done anything that would be deemed adventure. And I'm not sure if this is, but it's, you know, this is just cubby housing for adults in a sense. But behind me is the house and I can see the front door. And if Helen was to do the dishes loudly, I'd be able to hear her. You know, I thought this was going to be about backyard adventure. You know, getting the most bang for my buck, so close to home. Up I go and spend the night and have a meal and a cup of coffee. You get a different view of the world. But you know what, it's, it's, this has turned into a love letter to these trees. They're not just a platform. You have to pay attention to what, what is here. I've never looked up into these trees and not seen something. A bird life or, or movement or beauty. I think we were kind of acquaintances before I spent the night. Yeah, now we're mates. Yeah, there's May and me and Helen and a bunch of big gums. <laughs> 